Hi everyone. How are you guys doing? I am here live. I think I'm live. I'm using a new streaming software to go live today. Um, it's great to be here with you guys. I'll give I'll give this a minute to see who jumps on. I'm just going to check on my other page to see. Yep. Okay, good. We're live. How does it get better than this? I am so, so happy to be here from oh, Devon, my house. Um, Simon and I are here and it is wonderful. The weather is amazing and we are just so, so happy. So this is, uh, you know, obviously direct to you from my home. Um, and I am going to be talking with you guys today about perfectionism and anxiety. How are the two linked? Why are they linked? What does perfectionism actually create and what can you do to change it? Now, I have to start off by saying that I am one of, I was going to say one of the worst perfectionists, but really it should be one of the best and most perfect perfectionists <laughs> that I have met. And I don't mean that in a great way, okay? I'm not trying to say that what I do is perfect or the things that I create have perfect results. No, what I'm actually talking about is the perfectionism that we demand of ourselves, but also the perfectionism that can drive us crazy. And I'm talking completely crazy. I remember when I was about nine years old, I used to play the violin. Um, and I remember practicing over and over and over again, practicing, you know, whatever we were playing that week at home, trying to get it as perfect as I could. And I would practice excessively. And I remember going to school on the day that we had to, we didn't have to present this to anyone other than the teacher and the other two students, because there were only three of us in the class that did violin. Um, and I was so scared of not being perfect. Not, I didn't want to be mediocre. I didn't want to be good. It had to be pristine, flawless, the most exceptional, you know, um, whatever, the recital, playing, playing of that song, whatever it was. Um, and because I had already decided that it wasn't perfect enough, because that's one of the things about perfectionism, you have to have already decided that it's not great, otherwise you wouldn't be seeking perfectionism. So in my world, I already thought that I must be terrible just because I didn't feel fully confident that what I was doing was outrageously phenomenal, that I pretended that I had left my bow at home. When I hadn't, it was in the other classroom. I left it there on purpose so that I had to just hold the violin and put my fingers in the right places to play. And I remember just being petrified, thinking, oh my gosh, the teacher's going to see my fingers. She's going to know that I have not got this down 110%. And at the end of the piece, she looked at me and she was like, wow, I really wish that you hadn't forgotten your bow because that was just flawless. I could tell you've been working so hard and practicing so much. And I remember thinking, but it wasn't perfect. It probably wouldn't have sounded perfect. I wouldn't have sounded like some kind of professional musician. So that was from when I was nine years old, just to give you a sense of the pressure that I would put on myself to be perfect. So I, you know, I've been looking at this topic for a very long time, mostly in the sense that I would use most of the self-development tools that I came across in my life, and even the tools of access consciousness to become more perfect which really is completely the opposite of consciousness because perfection in itself is actually a judgment. If you think about it, is perfection actually real or is it just your point of view? And will your idea of perfect be the same as somebody else's? Not at all, okay? And these, these things are kind of obvious, you know, when, when we talk about them out loud like this and we can go, yeah, yeah, of course, it's super easy. It's not gonna be the same for me as it is for everyone else. It's just, our perspectives are different, our points of view are different. However, when you get into the mind of a perfectionist, <laughs> it's a crazy world in there, okay, I'm telling you from experience. So perfectionism, um, as we know it, and as it 
appears on the outside is really holding yourself to incredibly high standards in absolutely everything that you do to the point where you won't do certain activities or engage in certain social situations if you're not perfect enough according to your own judgments. I have been known in my teenage years and even in my adult life to not go and socialize if for whatever reason I thought that I wasn't going to deliver a perfect situation. So if I was going to be too boring for the people, or if I wasn't going to be intelligent enough for the the people that I'd be socializing with, or if I didn't have the right outfit, um, anything, it could have been anything. But at the base of it, what was always there was this incredible need for perfection. Now, if you have ever thought to yourself, whatever I do, it's never enough, to yourself, not as a blaming of other people, okay? Because that's a whole other thing. Perfectionism really is an internal thing. So it's not really about saying, okay, you guys never think I'm perfect enough. A perfectionist very often doesn't go that far. They're still here at step one where they are having these thoughts internally with themselves. So um, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, whatever I do, I am never good enough, or I've got to be the best, if I'm not the best, then I failed, or I have to work around the clock, 24 hours a day to make sure that I deliver the absolute best in my job or to my boss so that I don't disappoint them, so they don't get annoyed or react to me in any way. If you're living from that perspective, if you're constantly thinking, oh, I should have done this better, I could have done this different, then somewhere in your world, there might be an element of perfectionism going on. Now, you may be a slight perfectionist or an extreme perfectionist like I have been for most of my life. Um, I say most of my life because, you know, it's a work in progress, but it's definitely something that you can use to your advantage. And we'll get to that in a minute. So what do you do then to have a lot more ease when you're having the sleepless nights because you're worrying? Because guess what? perfectionism does. It doesn't actually ever get you to become perfect. It just gets you to worry more about all the possible case scenarios where you're not good enough, where you're failing, where people might discover that you're a fraud and you don't actually know what you're doing. Um, I can't tell you the amount of times that I prepared presentations at university and then pretended that I forgot that it was my day to present just because it wasn't perfect enough. Ha ha ha. Sorry to any of my old lecturers who may watch this, which they never will. So anyway, not so sorry, actually, because it got me to realize what it was that I was doing to myself at a very early stage. Um, But if you have any of that going on, it can cause a lot of stress. It can cause a lot of anxiety. Why? Because you're constantly waiting for some kind of disaster to occur, some kind of disaster that you've already decided is going to happen. So here are my top tips that I use to calm things down when it comes to perfectionism, because you want to calm things down in your mind. You want to calm down that sense of doom, like there's something terrible, but you also want to do it from a place where you're not trying to be perfect at stopping the perfectionism. Okay. This isn't another tool designed for you to judge yourself. It's actually a place for you to get out of judgment of yourself and perfectionists are incredible and phenomenal at judging themselves. (laughs) So one of the key things is going to be to get out of that judgment. The, the, my favorite tool, one of my favorite tools to get out of judgment is to ask a question, any question. Why? Because it interrupts that thought pattern. It interrupts your usual automatic pilot of going straight into self-doubt, into shame, into regret, into blaming yourself, feeling guilty. And it actually interrupts that interrupts those thoughts, feelings, and emotions that comes up, and it kind of just opens the door to something else so that you've got to look at things from a new point of view, basically. So number one, you want to ask, who am I being right now? Okay, that's the question. Who am I being? And take a second, because if you think about it, when you are born, do you come in trying to be perfect? No. Obviously not. You come in and you're generally happy. You're crying and screaming when you have some kind of physical need, but that's pretty much it. Okay. So everything else that comes up after that is something that we've learned, something that's been taught to us, something that's been handed down that we've bought hook, line and sinker. 
And then we start to create our lives based on those perspectives as though that is us. You know, we create our personality based on it. We create our image based on it. Um, and we create our lives the way that they show up based on all these things that very often have nothing to do with our true being and who we are truly. So you want to ask, first of all, who am I being here? Okay. When I started to ask myself that, what I realized was that I was being the little girl that would try and please her father because my father always demanded for us to be perfect. And in particular me, because I was the first born um, of the kids. And so I had to be the perfect exemplary child, not what he had decided he was, which was a failure. Not that he is a failure, but we have these judgments of ourselves and he came from a very rough background um, in Colombia, used to kind of live halfway on the streets and stuff. And now he wanted a better life for us. And so there was a lot of pressure on me. So when I started to ask, who am I being? Oh, I'm being this thing and this personality that would have made my father happy. Okay, that's great. Nothing wrong with that. And what would I like to choose right now? Okay, so it interrupts that pattern. It interrupts that auto response system that you have to the situation, to what it is that's going on, so that you can suddenly kind of snap out of it a little bit and have a different viewpoint that you're functioning from. Okay, so first of all, who am I being here? And ask yourself that every time. It doesn't really work to just ask it once and then expect a huge life change. Every time you ask the question, the idea here is to start uncovering your own awareness and accessing your knowing. Now, it may not come immediately to you. You may ask, who am I being here? And just be really frustrated and have nothing change at all in that moment. And that's okay. Relax, all right? You're gonna want to relax with all of the tools of access because the more you relax, the more you can receive, okay? And this is all about receiving, okay? Access consciousness is really about you receiving you, you receiving more ease, you receiving the talents and abilities that you have, you receiving that you don't necessarily need to judge yourself the whole time, <laughs> receiving more of everything that makes your life easier. Okay, so if you just take a moment, relax, go easy on yourself. If you've been trying to be perfect your whole life, and this takes you a couple of weeks, couple of months, what's the big deal, okay? So take a moment and just ask yourself, who am I being right now? From a space of curiosity, because a question will always contribute. However, the difference is when you ask a question from this kind of stressed point of view of, oh, I'm just asking that question because I'm supposed to, as opposed to being really present with it and going, do you know what, I've got nothing to lose, so let me be totally present with this just for a moment, who am I being right now? That's a completely different energy. And in that, and in you being willing to be so present with yourself and what it is that's going on for you, that's where you can create some very, very dynamic change very quickly too. So the second tool is you want to ask, is this mine? Now, that question can seem a bit random, but for example, if you are stressing about a meeting that you've got coming up and you feel like you're not prepared enough or it won't be perfect enough or you know when we can tend to run through all these different scenarios in our minds about what will they think if i say this or are they going to react in this way and we, we start to try and plan out what we'll say in all the different situations well if they you know start to question me then i'll come back with this really cool thing or if they think it's not good enough then i'll show them you know and we come up with all this craziness so if you find yourself doing that, ask yourself, is this mine? Okay. Now what you're asking about is, is this need to be perfect in this moment mine? Is this need mine? Is this way of functioning and thinking actually mine? If I were being true to myself and I were truly being me, would this be the way that I would function here or would I be different? What tends to happen a lot of the time is asking that question will start to give you the awareness of where it is that you've bought that point of view from. So if you perhaps bought it from a parent, you know, like again, the more that I have asked in the last, you know, years, many years that I've been doing access consciousness, is this mine? The more it's kind of shifted um, and sloughed off all these layers of recognizing all the places where I was trying to please other people, or have a similar mindset to people in my family, for example, because, you know, 
it's your family. If everybody thinks in one way, then you're supposed to be that way too. If everybody stresses about money, then surely you should be stressed about money. If everybody wants to be perfect in a particular area, then you should too, right? Or maybe not. Maybe it doesn't need to apply to you the same way. So by asking, is this mine? Just take a second to notice what it is that goes on for you, okay? Does it suddenly shift? Do you have a memory come up? Do you think of somebody? If you do ask, okay, so is this actually that person's, did I buy it from them, all right? Because it's so easy to start functioning the way that other people do. And the the absolute most obvious clue that you will have to know when you're functioning the way that someone else would, that isn't necessarily your way, of functioning and by functioning I mean the way you react to the world the choices you make how you behave the way that you think about certain situations um, the way you think about yourself and the way to know when you're buying that from somebody else is because it won't be easy it'll create angst it'll create turmoil in your world it'll be difficult it'll feel heavy it'll make you feel contracted like you have less choices available every single time you have that in absolutely any area of your life that is because that perspective, that way of being, that way of behaving is not actually your true way of behaving. It's something that you've bought along the line or or some kind of image you're trying to fit into. Okay, so by doing that, again, you're giving yourself the awareness of, hold on a second, this doesn't quite feel like me. It's not light, it's not expansive, it's creating angst, it's creating difficulty. Is this mine? Okay, and the reason you want to ask the question is because when you ask it, you get the awareness of whether it is or it isn't. Okay, it's not about walking along going, oh, I learned this from here and I learned this from there. It's about you suddenly recognizing, wow, that's where that came from. Okay, what other choice do I have available? So it's not just a cognitive exercise to get you to change your mind about how it is that you react in certain situations or your automatic responses to trying to be perfect. It's actually about creating an energetic shift in your world. You know, just like when you receive some great news, it changes your energy, it changes your perspective, your outlook, your the way that your body feels, your future even. You know, you could have been heading in one direction and then suddenly just got some great news. Suddenly it's like you're heading in a, a different, perhaps much brighter direction. Same thing with this, okay? It's not just designed to change your mindset again. It's actually designed to open it up so that your whole energy shifts. And that's what's very, very potent and powerful about the access consciousness tools. And the third and final thing um, that you can begin to do with yourself is after you've asked these questions, start to ask yourself as well, okay, so if there were no right or wrong here, what would I choose? And this one's interesting because again, it's not gonna be a cognitive thing where you recognize, oh, I, I would, you know, I'm trying to get it right here, or I'm trying to avoid being wrong, although very often that is what perfectionism is, only to an extreme level. But what it does is it actually short circuits, again, that automatic thought pattern where you're trying to be perfect, be right, be good, make sure you don't do anything wrong or bad or incorrect. And it interrupts and it goes, hold on, what else is possible? So your mind then has to look for something else. Your whole being, your whole energy then has to open up to something different because you've asked that question. I love asking that question for everything, particularly when I'm like, I can't put this out there yet, or I can't do this in my business, or I can't send off this text right now because I don't have all of the pieces. I don't have the full picture. I always ask myself, if there were no right or wrong here, what would I choose? And that just relaxes my world because if truly you couldn't get it right and you couldn't get it wrong, would you have more choices or less choices? You'd have a lot more choices, okay? So remember, perfectionism is always something that's learned. It's really how we judge ourselves into the ground and it's always a lie as well, okay? Perfectionism is not real. Nothing and nobody can be perfect. It's only your point of view as to whether that thing is perfect or not. And if you're a perfectionist, you're gonna probably be judging yourself quite a lot. So you wanna start asking these three things. One, who are you being? Who are you being in those situations, in those moments when you're trying to get it perfect? Two, is it yours? You don't need to figure out where it came from or who whose it is. You might get an awareness, but you also may not, and it's okay. Just ask, is this mine? We need to know very clearly whether it's yours or not. Don't need to know where it's from, okay? 
kind of like receiving post in the mail. If it doesn't belong to you, you don't need to go and investigate who it belongs to and, you know, do all this stuff. You just return it to senders. Exactly the same thing. And if there were no right or wrong here, what would I choose? So start asking that, see how it goes and see if it starts to ease some of the angst and stress in your world that perfectionism is designed to cause. So I hope that this video has been a contribution to you. If you've liked it, please hit like, please share. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.